well, what a powerful statement that he makes with this film. It just, the colors that used seem so appropriate, the brownish and the yellowish. Just, what a, what a way to display the dying soldiers and suffering and everything. Uh, that's the, the personalities in all this, if they, you could say we're working on personalities, was fantastic. The way the camera followed their expressions, what they had to do, how they had to do it, the long gloomy night, incredible. It's, it's almost like being one step from hell, so to say. Um, <clears throat> I'll have to look at this at least one more time. If not, I'll be anxious to get more insights into it. But uh, it was magnificent portrayal of the tragedy of war and what can come out of it besides superheroes and something like that. This was a, shows the suffering and misery and monotony of the life under orders in time of war. I need to clear my throat now. I'm sorry, I got right, a little go raspy. I'd love to be able to go back and pick up on every word said and every every nook and cranny of the, of the movie. It's hard to call it just a movie. It was like for real. It was actually like a real situation, and I was there participating. It actually it takes guts to just face into this thing. And uh, we're a couple of young creators of this program. Uh, we're able to endure and magnify situations. It was incredible. The war is hell, and this proves it for sure. Uh, excuse me a second. <clears throat> I'll have to dwell over this for quite a while. In fact, I have periodically picked up on segments, and uh, like a blotter that gets ink off a of paper, my mind is getting sucked up on different parts, different characters. This, the uh, actors that were, well, I don't even want to call them actors, but their expressions and all were so universal. It was truly insightful as far as I'm concerned. And I can't wait for the opportunity to uh, discover more about this story film and get greater insights including Winston Churchill. I'm at an age where I experience most of this well I say uh, the early war days I had the feeling for it, I had relatives in in the military. I remember the highlights of certain aspects of the war and uh, in a way, some of that was glory days, even though we had bad days. But it's magnificent portrayal of something we should hope never to have to see again in real life version. It was really something, mankind being great for mankind and individuals, how much can be said about such a magnificent event and how sad the event was also. But we got to take the best out of the worst of things sometimes. And this is a magnificent highlight of the survival of mankind in the, and as we would like to think it possible. I can almost pause after every couple of minutes and just 
think about it, let it just sink in before I go on for any comments. I intend to see it several times more. I have to really get into it in order to satisfy this surge for the magnificence of mankind and the horror of some of mankind. But that's how it goes. That's life. The name Dunkirk will always live in the hearts of soldiers and parents and brothers and sisters who just touched on it. I, I'm so grateful that I had the opportunity to see this with a very special friend, <laughs> a very special friend. And now I'm going to take my little one minute break. Thank you. Break for what? Bathroom? Well, no, just this. Oh, okay. You're talking about the actors. Uh, I, I was impressed how they actually cast like 18, 19 year olds in this because a lot of movies, they don't want young people to portray young people. They want established actors like 30 years old, but it doesn't look right because you got 30 year olds playing teenagers. And in this, you can actually see these are the faces of like 19 year olds. I mean, they look like kids, basically. But there's a nobleness, nobility in their portrayals by just showing their faces, their eyes, and their inner feelings. Not too much had to be discussed. It was projected on their faces. I noticed a couple in particular that I almost recognized as somebody I knew or knew of who suffered much and uh, it's magnificent how far-reaching these situations were. And thank God the, the superior people, ranks and all, it was a great portrayal of the guiding of the authorities and what they could do when they were on the right side. Right side, that means when they used the judgment and prudence and patience and everything else. I truly feel like this was a special act to see this program, and I intend to see it again soon as reasonable after I let some more thoughts sink into my head or something like that. And all I could say is God bless mankind and the men and women that have to endure all these things more directly most of the time. And uh, this, this should be experienced by groups where you don't have to use words just use their eyes and open their hearts and have have feelings for not only the victors but also the victims uh, um, of the uh, well the enemy so to say mankind suffered and for what noble reason can we really say we just live for our loved ones and and just seek the truth as long as we can and be sincere about it. I will be back in a moment. <laughs> and uh, <coughs> what did you think of the aerial combat scenes? Well, that aerial combat and all, it almost seemed like a symphony when it came to the beauty of the flying and everything else. It was a great harmony in the sky, but sometimes we don't find the good guys there in the air helping. But then uh, the f flying scenes were super duper. And I remember the Spitfire way back when I was a youngster and I made one in school and that was sort of like a sacred image, a Spitfire flying gloriously. 
the whole world, the sea seemed magnificent at that time. It's a shame it had to be the graves of so many people and their loved ones who could never uh, be uh, praised and remembered with monuments and stones. The sea represents a great body of death, suffering, and in the end, tranquility. I wonder, I wonder how long these things will be going on. But uh, a little country like England was magnificent in its attempt and may, may the friends, relatives, and what have you from this era find some, uh, some consolation in the heart and soul that went into this production. You were in the Air Force in America for a long time. Uh, anything like compared to that or anything evoke memories of that? I mean, some experiences, I guess, are very different. Some are kind of the same across countries, across different branches of the military. Just in general, I worked for an air rescue outfit where if a plane it was near Libya, North Africa, and what happened is if a, any planes had trouble or crashed or whatever in the Mediterranean near Libya, Northern Africa, our planes went out to get them and as fast as they can and, and there was a celebration when they were helped and brought back. But I remember one case where they had about five or seven people in the plane and when our plane went out to rescue them, uh, they, they said, we, we really can't go because our planes aren't, they need maintenance work to certain problems that we couldn't get ahead of. And, uh, and so they were out there and they asked the commander and uh, they said, well, what are we gonna do? What do you want us to do? And they just told him, well, you make the decision to the pilot that was there on the plane that could bring him back. And uh, he says, well, he says, you, you should, they should just come back while your plane is still flying okay. They're a couple of hundred miles out to sea, I believe, in the Mediterranean, big waves and everything. He says, so just, come home and hope somebody else will be there to help him. And then the pilot of that plane that went to rescue him says, well, either we all come back together or we all stay here together. So the, he elected to come back. And when he came back, he was barely flying a couple feet above the water in case he had to crash. And then he landed on the shore and uh, Everybody was very, very happy. And that was a memorable moment. And then there were other things where people just plain crashed or had problems and then he brought them back. But the airplanes, speaking of airplanes, the commander of the plane that dropped the atomic bomb, um, he, he was quite a man in more ways than one. One time I was in a store, in a commissary store, buying food, and I saw this little, rather little short guy coming in the line with uh, just a bottle of milk and bread. And uh, I said, I'm gonna be going crazy, but I think I know who that is. And sure, and I told him, he said, why don't you go ahead, I got all day. And uh, he said, well, that's funny, I got all day too. And the person that said that was a, it was the officer that dropped the atomic bomb on on, uh, on uh, Hiroshima. And uh, met all kind of variety of people, home, uh, high rank, low rank, but great stories. And, uh, well, airplane, I met the pilot that commanded the first space module. I went in outer space and uh, and met so many people just randomly, all these experiences come and get 
sucked into your head and then you go sit on a beach and meditate on it or something like that. Um, this this story, though, all this water, there's nothing glamorous about it in any way, shape, or form. It was just a tragedy that happened, and all that we should do is be able to draw from it the tragedy of conflict and and make the best and, and overcome it, period. Overcome it. I could go on my, I had over 20 years experience in the military and I had some other tragedies but lined up with, but I, I'm satisfied that an interesting life, even though it wasn't always gay and happy, but still, uh, that's the way the ball bounces, so to say. Hallelujah, I outspoke myself, I guess. I like that the movie didn't feel like an adventure. A lot of war movies, they almost feel like it would be fun if you were inside the movie fighting. This, it felt like terror, like you'd want to get out as soon as possible. There was a physicality to the locations and uh, a sense of death right there in the water. There's no escape. They were pushed back to the coast of France. And even in the plains, you could feel how they weren't safe inside there, obviously. Yes, I see what you mean. And of course, there's always a dark side of life, a darker side and a darker side. And this showed the many dark sides. And once in a while, we got a little smile or almost recognition that, hey, there's a buddy that survived and, you know, and, but it's always on a dark side because something impacting that much, that long, just erodes the heart and soul of a human being. But the young men in it, it was marvelous that some of them could portray the, the experience and depth and everything that this story needed. Very wonderful characters. And none of them were acting, they were just seemingly being themselves in the situation. Amen. I knew I was a big bullshitter, but that takes the cake.